here we go. We got to get to uh, the the most frustrating weekend. I well, one one of the things is frustrating. The other is, I don't know, not frustrating, weird, and annoying. But uh, it would appear diamond dreams for all of us uh, that uh, we're excited about postseason softball, postseason baseball, running kick to the cojones. That was your weekend. Get you some of that, everybody. Hanging on by a thread. The big story, obviously, being FSU softball as uh, a team that was, what, 32-0 and in non-conference games heading into Sunday, a team that had won 24 straight regional games, 54 on five, 54 and five uh, on Saturday turns into 54 and seven on Sunday. And good night, Irene. Grand opening, grand closing. Thanks for playing. Stunning, stunning result in what happened here at home. And it's weird because we lead with it. That's how stunning it is. I ordinarily, you know, on this show, we'd probably lead with something football oriented, FSU baseball, perhaps, although it gave us nothing to be happy about. But that Sunday, that Sunday is shocking for FSU softball. And it's a testament to how great they've been, how consistently great they've been. And and, and really, when you think back on this, it's weird foreshadowing. And I know she didn't mean it to be. Coach Alameda, who Lonnie is such a class act and was again after this uh, collapse here against a a Mississippi State team that's really, quite frankly, while deserving of immense credit for doing what they did, not any good. They lost 25 games in the regular season, for Christ's sakes. But the point is, she was gracious, as always, was Coach Alameda. And I think that's an exceptionally difficult thing to do. I'll get to that in a bit where we talk about the PGA Championship. But think about that, 54-5 and to 54-7, and and just like that, you're done. You get beat at home. And... It's 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 just odd that Watson and Sandercock they don't get it done and 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 that's not like pointing and blaming and any of that stuff that's just that's the frustration because you 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 can't believe it and heck Sandercock was thirty and one coming into Sunday took the L in both games it's a brutal way to have it end thirty and three now obviously I feel for them but woo. I want to go back to what I said was uh, oddly uh, foreshadowing, and and that was that, uh, you know, you can take for granted, I think. Um, it's true, and she said it. She talked about don't take for granted the successes, the wins, the accomplishments. And in some ways, uh, in, in many cases, for Florida State softball, for the last number of years, they've been record-breaking, and, and that's true of this year, too. It's But, you know, it's almost like sometimes that's just something you say. It's sort of like, you know, you you recognize because you if you're around long enough as a player and then a coach the way she is, you know that the potential for there to have a season end in heartbreak is very real. Only one team wins the national championship, and you've had enough successes and moments of despair along the way that you're able to kind of reflect and, and reminisce about what it means to have won as many games as this team did this year. And to know how special that is and that the record books will obviously reflect that for years and years to come. But the reality is when you have that kind of a season and you've been this kind of consistent, you don't expect it to come to an end on your home field against a team like Mississippi State that you've been vastly superior than all season long. You don't expect to get blanked in the first game. You don't expect to to lose the lead in the second game. And you do expect, and Corey Clark wrote about this on WarChant, Dot com, you do expect because they did it time and again that they're going to get the big hit, they're going to make the big play when they have to have it, it's there. But when you're successful and you've been really good in these big moments, and so much is expected of you, especially at home, especially when you're in the driver's seat of the regional, that if things go off the tracks, if things don't work out the way that you expected them to, if you get put up against it in a bad situation, the weight of those expectations, the weight of those successes can become overwhelming, can become stifling. I'm not saying that's what happened, but we kept waiting around for the big hit, the big moment. And the later it got, 
all of a sudden you 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 really are at that point in a position that the unthinkable becomes a little bit more clear. You can see it from where you stand. All of a sudden, the realization that this may not work out uh, is probably a bit breathtaking. Uh, I, I hate it for the ladies. I hate it for this softball program that has been so good. And I was guilty of it, too, certainly expecting them to cruise uh, this weekend. It didn't happen. And, you know, you look at the finishing touches. I saw Florida State tweeted this out. You can look at any number of the uh, successes of which I'm referencing. They finished the season with 54 wins. They were the 21st Florida State softball team to win 50 or more games in a season. It's the eighth time in Coach Alameda's uh, career here uh, that they've reached 50 wins. FSU's 49-5 and record in the regular season, the highest winning percentage in a regular season in school history, makes it all the more stunning that they fall. And, you know, you, you got a winning percentage of over 900 going into the postseason you're hosting. And you run rule uh, USF, and you're like, okay, well, this is, I mean, they're going to cruise. This is really just sort of the precursor to the real excitement we were all getting ready to settle in for, and alas, it, it, it doesn't happen. It's, uh, it's a shame. Now to the baseball team, which, Jesus, guys, they just said screw it, decided to end the year by falling flat on their face as spectacularly as one can. Starting pitching, which has been really the cornerstone of what we've had to rely on because they don't do a lot of other things all that well. They don't hit for power. They don't pick up the baseball very well. They don't run the bases very well. So, you know, other aspects of the game that are of vital importance, they don't do very well. But you expect your frontline pitching to get the deal done, at least win a game on the road. But alas, they still don't have a reliable third starter. The starting pitching this weekend was awful again. The Knowles starters gave a robust 10 innings pitched in three games. Hmm, that'll hurt your feelings. Of those 10 innings pitched from the starting pitching for Florida State, they gave up 10 earned runs and uh, walked five. Yeah. Also 13 hits. Yeah, not good. Not good. They've now lost four straight. They enter the ACC tournament. Not pitching well. Don't worry, they don't pick up the baseball either. The ACC tournament starts on Tuesday. They play Wednesday against Virginia, then Notre Dame on Thursday. Both those games are at 3 o'clock. My God, football can't get here soon enough. Can't happen soon enough. Again, circling back really quickly to softball, uh, where I mentioned that Lonnie talked about taking the time to appreciate wins and milestones. It kind of gets me into uh, other big ticket items of the weekend, which was obviously a major was decided. And Justin Thomas wins the PGA championship, comes back from seven shots down to start the day over the last 13 holes yesterday, including the playoff. He was six under par and bogey free. Well, that's thrown it on the table. That's a whole lot of come get you some. But you saw the expression and the, the outpouring of emotion that he had. Well, think about how long it's been since he won. There's a guy with as much pure talent and shot-making ability as there is on tour, and it just shows you how difficult it is to win these things. And it was, it, you know, it took a collapse and a couple of other things to go right for him to just get his second PGA championship. But I also think that the gap between all of those lets you realize, man, that game is hard and you better appreciate these things. You better appreciate these moments. By the way, <laughs> while I'm all over the map and a little scattershot here at the beginning, let me just say this. As funny as it is, well, not funny, but as frustrating as it is to watch that Florida State baseball team, like, I know this is going to seem absurd for you guys to hear me say this. They go in... Ninth in the ACC. They win a couple games. They win three games. They win two games in this thing. You wouldn't be stunned. It's silliness. It's baseball. If they pitch, they could. Uh, I go in with very low hopes. Um, I, it was um, <laughs> something to behold. I want to give credit, just as I did 
to Lonnie Alameda for standing up there and giving credit to Mississippi State and saying all the right things. But I want to do that, too, for Mito Pereira. Now, think about this guy. And I'm, I, this, you know how I know I'm getting old? I used to wish for things like this. I used to root for things like this. The Van Veldian moments in sport drew me to the television. I would watch guys collapse in the moment, and not because I had some sort of personal vendetta against any of these guys. I mean, in most cases, I don't know those guys. And But you just like to see drama. You want to see some sort of drama. And to some extent, it was drama-free. So I was like, oh, you know, I, I want to see this thing get interesting. And I wanted to see Will Zalatoris. And I know you did, and I'll get to that in a moment. But uh, Will Zalatoris, Justin Thomas, at the beginning of the day, I was like, oh, maybe Rory makes a run, whatever. We're naming guys out there. You just want to see it be thrilling. When he steps to 18 <laughs> to hit that tee shot with a one-stroke lead, I remember I realized in the moment, like, I, I have a bad feeling about this because he'd been all over the map. And I kind of thought, this, this is not going to end well. I'm really concerned about this. But I didn't anticipate that it was going to be a double and he wouldn't make the playoff. I just assumed a bogey and he'd lose in the playoff and he'd kick himself. But to not even get to the playoff in that moment because of that drive, I thought, oh, I can't watch this anymore. I feel bad for guys. I think I've reached the age that I look at them as kids. He's like 24. And I just want to give him a hug. Like, you'll be back, man, probably, if this doesn't ruin you, which it might. <laughs> at least in that tournament yesterday, I was not in that frame of mind. But, no, because um, you were gambling on Zalatoris yes, to win. <laughs> that, that's that's true. Uh, but it's weird how you have these players you don't like. So, like, for me, it was Sergio for a long time. So when he won the Masters, I'm actively rooting for him to put every ball in the water possible. Mm -hmm. But these no-name players who – yeah, are never ever going to be in contention again. More than likely, you kind of root for him. You do, and I I rooted for him because I could see that look on his face. Like my golf swing is not with me today. I'm just trying to find a way to get this thing down. Each of these holes, I'm just. He made how many hundreds of feet of putt did he make? Uh, just trying to salvage par on every hole. It was remarkable. But here's where I want to give him credit, just really quickly, because it it shouldn't go unnoticed. I think it's important. That dude, English is not his first language, and he just suffered through probably the most difficult defeat that he's ever going to suffer through with the opportunity of a lifetime on his driver on 18. So it's palpable. You can taste it. You're about to be a major champion, multimillionaire, everything under the sun, right? Your life is going to be forever changed, and you hit that drive into the water. You double bogey that hole. You don't even make the playoff. You lose out on... Roughly $1.9 million. <laughs> wow, that, that's, that hurts your feelings. And yet, no qualms about giving that interview. And why do I bring that up? Because the guy we love didn't do the interview. Rory didn't do the interview on Saturday, and he didn't do it on Sunday. He was so mad at himself. Really? Come on, man. That's one thing. Like, you can't do that. You've got to own it. you got to step up to that and do that interview. It's not that hard. Amanda Balionis is not going to, like, pounce with some sort of hard-hitting, you know, examination of your choke. Yeah, this is not Barbara Walters. No, like, you're going to get some softball questions. She's going to give you some maneuverability. She's going to let you explain how it was that it happened. And yet, he ducks it, and this guy... Again, not even, you know, it, how uncomfortable it has to be. But he's, and he said it before, he's like, I'm working really hard on my English and I'm trying and it's not even his first language and he's had the most crushing blow ever. And he's like, I'll, yeah, I'll do the interview. Yeah, I got it. <claps> Bravo, brother. That makes you want to root for a guy like that. Good for him. I hope, I hope he does. I mean, he's young. He's young. He's got a shot. But, you know, this, this go one or two ways. You never really know. We'll see. It's Jeff Cameron. Just a football related talk here in a moment. 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. I always wanted to learn Spanish, but I never thought I'd have the time. 
Then I discovered Babbel. Babbel's lessons are fun. They only take like 10 or 15 minutes, and in three weeks, presto, you're speaking another language, like magic. I love that Babbel's lessons aren't just robots talking. They're voiced by native speakers, so you get the pronunciation just right. If you want to learn a language, there's no faster, easier, better way than Babbel. 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 Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Babbel.com. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue just north of Havana have become your destination for the best food either side of the state line. But what if you want fresh seafood? Say no more. Kenny and the crew have got you covered with seafood so fresh, the only way you'll get it fresher is if you grow a set of gills. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue, one mile north of the last light in Havana. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue, open seven days a week. Get your fill at the grill. Congratulations to all the class of 2022 graduates. Congratulations to Parker Bell at Child High School. We are so incredibly proud of you and can't wait to see what the future has in store as you start at the University of Florida in the fall. Go Gators and congratulations. If you'd like to send a congratulations message over the air to your graduate, just call the Lively Technical College Grad Star Line at 850-523-7890. Refreshing and simple, two words you don't hear many people use to describe their experience going through the process of getting a home loan. That's what puts the Hamilton Home Loans experience in a category all their own. If you're buying or refinancing a home, Hamilton Home Loans will provide a personalized mortgage experience that is dedicated to making the process refreshingly simple. It all begins with an initial consultation with an experienced Hamilton Home Loans advisor to find out what your goals are in order to find the right mortgage to suit your specific needs. Then your personal home loan advisor will take you through all the steps from application, underwriting, approval, and closing, all the way to the front steps of your new home. Once you've experienced the Hamilton home loan process, you can be a customer for life and never have to pay lender fees again. For first responders, nurses, physician assistants, teachers, active and retired military, ask about the Hamilton for Heroes program. Personalized attention with your needs put first. Now that's refreshingly simple. Find out more at HamiltonHomeLoans.com. That's HamiltonHomeLoans.com. Equal housing lender. NMLS number 200719. Hey, no fans, our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Are still fighting. It is the ACC tournament again. It begins Tuesday. They play Wednesday, three o'clock. Virginia, then Notre Dame. We'll see what happens. I think that's the order of things. Double check that in a moment. If they don't pick up the baseball and get good starting pitching, I don't know how we can expect much. But who knows? It's baseball. It's a weird game. I'd say it's a weirder game, baseball, than softball. Softball actually, your elite teams don't do what Florida State did this weekend. That's not me taking an unnecessary shot at softball. For the most part, dominant teams remain dominant. And get the opportunity to compete for a national championship. That's why it was a epic 
uh, loss and uh, frustrating one at that. Not saying it doesn't happen, but it, it, it's pretty rare uh, when we talk about the balance of competition in the sport. Um, it's it's kind of strange to see that result. It, it really is. Now, I will say Florida State's pitching uh, this year at times, we, we you know, was not nearly as dominant as it has been. So I thought that there was a possibility they could lose like a high scoring affair or something like that. We've seen some nine, seven, you know, they get, the ACC tournament, they give up a lot of runs and you're kind of thinking, well, I mean, they, they, they could get out slugged, but they're not going to get out pitched, but to get blank five to nothing, that was shocking. Then to lose a game like this, four to three, that's pretty stunning On to football, which is what I teased before the break. And let's go with that for a moment because we brought this name up a while back. He's on campus today. Our own Michael Langston, warchant.com, noting um, Charlotte offensive lineman uh, Dimitri Emanuel is on campus. And uh, it's interesting. This is a player, and this is where we're at. If you think about where we're at, uh, anytime, anytime that uh, there's an offensive lineman in town, there's an offensive lineman like driving past the stadium, giving a glance at it. Anytime there's a lineman who at some point is seen at a restaurant, it's just anything to do with an offensive lineman. We as a fan base are like, well, maybe it's possible. And our ears perk up and we're waiting for the news. And I understand that because we haven't been good up front in a long time. This is not a guy that is going to change the fortunes of Florida State football dramatically. He's a guy that, if you listen, I, I think he's a guy that provides depth. I, I depth. I don't think he's necessarily a starter. Then again, if you go back to Bless Harris, what you know about Bless Harris? When we when we heard Bless Harris was coming in, and we looked at the, uh, it, you know, you looked at the comps with him, you looked at the numbers, you looked at what he was physically, what he wasn't. You thought, okay, well. Maybe he's a guy being brought in to provide quality backup, that if he has to start a game or two at a position where lots of guys tend to get hurt in the trenches, that you don't automatically fall off a cliff. And that's really been a huge problem for Florida State on the whole, is that when I – this happens all the time. People will ask me uh, about the team and about what I think is going to happen or what I, what I like and don't like. And every time we get to the don't like category – I mentioned the lack of depth and how this thing falls off a cliff if guys get hurt. That the the difference between the starters and the backups at most positions are pretty glaring. It's a precipitous drop off. It is it is a, a a concerning development if guys go down on this roster that uh, it started or starters go down almost at every position. Almost at every position, you can go through every segment, almost every segment group, and you go. Well, this is uh this is a problem. The guy that's going to fill in for him this weekend kind of sucks. Like that conversation happens a lot. Unfortunately. Um and you immediately think, well, okay, that's a that's a toughie to overcome. They haven't had quality depth at most positions in some time. And and so when you look at these guys that they're looking to bring in in the transfer portal on the offensive line, in this case, that's all right. Look, um, Dimitri Manuel comes in. Can he help this team? I think he can help the team. Is he a game changer because of his prowess? No. Did he play a lot of positions along the offensive line? He did. He did. So versatility is always a plus. Experience is a plus. Uh, if, if somebody is to get hurt and you got to plug him in, he's played a lot of college football, a lot of college football, and he's done it at almost every position on the offensive line. So, yeah, it would be a nice get. It's not a game changer. Uh, I don't think he would be a starter. Uh, I still think you're talking about, you know, at this point, if well, we, we're still waiting on Caden Lyles to find out if he's going to be the real deal when fall practice starts. And, you know, if, if he is, you can start him at center. 
Uh, that gives you a little bit of versatility. Of course, the sure thing you know is Gibbons is at guard, and he's good, actually. So that's one of the nice things to say. Uh, Scott's going to be one of your tackles. I'm not in love with him. I think he's an average to below average player, but he's played a lot of football, and he's going to start for you. Um, Washington's going to start for you. Pretty nice player. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know. It gets, it gets, it gets a little interesting there. Uh, Harris. I mean, you know, just, just we'll we'll go from there um, on what that offensive line looks like, but it, it's not going to be the strength of this team. He's a guy that gives it versatility and depth. So let's see. They didn't get what they wanted from Lloyd Willis in the spring. I, I don't know how many times I have to say that, but I'm going to keep saying it because I know that they thought uh, that that he would take a step forward. In my opinion, he did not take a step forward. There was not a single day of practice that I was at in the spring where I thought, oh, look at that. Lloyd Willis is really kicking ass. Nope, nope, not at all. I thought, well, that's, that's a problem. And a lot of guys will then say, well, what about the linemen they're bringing in? What about the offensive linemen they're bringing in? What about Romello? What about guys like that? You don't want to start freshman offensive linemen almost ever. And that's part of, you know, that's part of the problem is that we've had to, and I've talked about this a lot, but just to reiterate, we've had to start guys before they're physically and emotionally ready. You get guys, you're going against grown ass men in the trenches. It, the, the difference between a high school tackle going up against another high school tackle and then one that comes to college at this level in the power five and takes on a guy that's a junior or a senior, a redshirt junior or a senior in college, man, that's grown men versus a kid, big kid. Big kid that got away with it in high school because he was bigger than everybody. Big kid who at 300 pounds is pretty much going to have his way in high school at any level. If he's got any juice at all, he's going to dominate the vast majority of his competition week in, week out, just by being bigger. But you get here, and it's a whole new ball game. Everybody's big. Everybody's strong. Everybody can play with technique. And if they've been in the program for three, four years, they've been eating right, they've been lifting, they've gotten stronger, smarter, bigger, all of it. Now you throw in a freshman or redshirt freshman who's not physically ready to compete against that, and they get broken down, they get beaten down. And then what happens, not only is it physically damaging to them, but it's mentally, psychologically damaging to them. And you've got to ask those guys to play and, and dust themselves off time and again, and eventually you watch confidence erodes. If not the physical tools, the confidence begins to erode. It's frustrating, but we have been in a vicious cycle of watching guys having to play before they're ready to play. And I don't care if they're decorated or not coming out of high school. If they're a lineman, there are exceptions. It's very rare. But if they're a lineman, you don't want to have to start them in year one. Offensive linemen aren't supposed to be starting as freshmen. It's the Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Your local news now. Tallahassee and Leon County residents came together for several events on Friday in honor of Emancipation Day. The ceremony started at Old City Cemetery where students redecorated the graves of unknown black soldiers with flags and flowers. As part of the Emancipation Day tradition, a reenactment took place of the reading from General Edward McCook to let the slaves know they were free. Tallahassee Memorial Hospital simulated a mass casualty incident Friday morning to allow first responders to practice how to handle dozens of critically injured patients all at once. The staff wasn't told what type of drill would be conducted. Does Dozens of volunteer victims from FSU's Emergency Management and Homeland Security Academic Program arrived within 30 minutes. The emergency and trauma teams also practiced triage and moved patients to the appropriate level of care as quickly as possible. While this drive gave EMS and ER staff training in the future, TMH plans to work with law enforcement and community agencies for drills as well. This is Rachel Linnea with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Scattered thunderstorms likely this afternoon, otherwise a mix of clouds and sun. High of 85, winds out of the southwest, 8 to 15 miles per hour. Chance for scattered thunderstorms tonight, lows dip down to about 70, mainly cloudy skies. Chance for scattered thunderstorms again tomorrow. Daytime highs approaching 90, mainly cloudy skies expected. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 87. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. 
I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Hey, hey you, can't you read the sign? It says, keep off the grass. Oh, but I just wanted to feel it. Excuse me? I wanted to feel what it was like to have an amazing lawn like you do. It always looks so good, even in the summertime. How do you do it, neighbor? They're called Lawn Johns. They come once a week. Maybe you should give them a call so you can tell other people to stay off your lawn. How's that sound? Ooh, yes. I would love to tell people to stay off my lawn. For the very best in lawn care, call the Lawn Johns at 850-322-2567. Stay off my lawn. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness, two Tallahassee locations. similar to uh, starting a young quarterback and kind of seeing a guy get broken because he's starting too soon and in an offensive lineman. I think one is physical. The other is more mental. The offensive linemen that have to start early in the trenches against grown-ass men uh, who have been around a, a collegiate football program for a few years, I, I think that's a physical beating, which affects the psychology, but I, I think it's more physical. And then they get broken down a little bit easier. I mean, like you see over time, their body's breaking down. Whereas I think with quarterbacks who are thrust into action too soon, they make some colossal mistakes. Uh, they have games where, you know, they complete 40% of their passes, throw a couple pick sixes, get teed off on, and they're seeing ghosts. They don't trust themselves to pull the trigger. They they leave the pocket, the first sign of distress. All that stuff happens. But you really, I mean, one of the beauties of the – well, I, I think the combine, you start with the combine, is that it's not just the physical that those guys are looking for. When Each position's different. Yeah, there are certain positions in the NFL where I don't really need to know if you're smart or not. I don't really need to know. I mean, I'd like to know. I mean, the more information that you have about anything is a good thing. But there are some positions where you don't exactly have to be a road Scholar for me to draft you and suggest that you can be plug and play and have success be nice if that you had a, a great football IQ or otherwise, but I don't need it. Other positions, I kind of need to know how quickly you can process and how quickly you can come to understand what we're trying to do. Quarterback would be one of those. And in addition to that, what you end up finding out is not just like this kid's big, strong, almost anybody that gets invited as a quarterback to the combine has the tools to play. They've usually got a pretty big arm. They're usually of requisite size. If they're not 6'4", six, 6'5", six, then there's something phenomenal athletically at 5'11", 6 feet or something like that that would even have you look at them, right? But you got to know what they are. What is their what, – are they, are they an alpha? Are they a guy that if I start them in year one and we're not a real good football team, the pieces around them aren't very good, if we lose games – if they try to force a few balls and we end up, you know, losing a game because he throws a pick late, is that going to eat him up? Are we going to lose two games because of that one? Or is he going to next week be ready to play? And that you can't answer unless you're in the room. That's the thing we don't know when we watch these drafts. You don't know how that interview went. You don't know what they thought about a guy like that when they sat down, they did the psych to figure out who he is. Uh, you know, there you go back. I was I use this as an example because I'm freaking old. But, you know, listen – Troy Aikman, a lot of times, people will say about Troy Aikman, well, I mean, listen, he had an all-star team around him. True. He had one of the greatest offensive lines in the history of football in Dallas, all-time leading rusher, as it turned out, David Smith. 
Yes, they were loaded at wide receiver. Jay Novacek at tight end. You go on down the list, right? They had pro bowlers everywhere. And that certainly aided in his ability to go and win championships and everything else. That said, no matter what you want to say about him as a passer and how many more Hall of Fame quarterbacks you'd take ahead of Troy Aikman because of whether that be uh, arm strength or uh, ability to extend plays or win with guys that were lesser than, whatever it might be, right? There was no questioning toughness. So they go 1-15 in 15 his first year, and he gets beaten like a drum, but it didn't have a deleterious effect on him moving forward. Like the next game, the next year, the next – he's able to take those kinds of beatings. Not everybody can. Not everybody can. So I think there's a little bit of a of a difference there. Um, to bring it back to for our younger audience, yeah, <laughs> they're like, "Who's that? You mean the radio announcer? I mean the TV announcer?" Yeah, Joe Burrow. Yes, keeps getting up after what fifty one oh, sacks. Good God, Sam! I looked it up. Sam Darnold is the quarterback we were talking about. Oh, on right. the other hand, yeah, is on I'm the sidelines ghosts. saying, "I'm seeing ghosts," and that's that's the that's the risky run. Yeah, it was awful. You remember that? I mean, that that audio clip, I remember hearing him say that, and I thought, oh, well, we got issues here, man. I don't know where we're coming back from this. I mean, my man is admitting he's seen ghosts. And he hasn't. He hasn't come back. No. Yeah, for the record, he still sucks. It's not working out. What a horrible moment for an organization to catch that, right, to get that audio clip, to see that video. Be like, what? Did my guy just say? Yeah, he did. He did. That's a toughie. Um, <laughs> Kate Vaughn, Mark Sanchez is getting sacked by random butts. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm not worried. By the way, as it goes, okay, let's go back to Florida State here. I want to do this for a second because Bill Connolly's updated SP Plus preseason projections for 2022 came out. And if you don't know about Bill Connolly or you've not read Bill Connolly before, uh, I, I personally, look, I don't look at anything as the holy grail per se. I like as much information as possible by which to assess players, teams, coaches, and everything can be a tool. So you can look at something and say, I value this or this aspect of his rankings. I like the way he comes to this conclusion. I like the system that he uses. It's all laid bare. You can figure out what it is if you just go read what he writes on ESPN. Um, and he does preseason projections of the SP Plus based on three factors. Now, I'm going to go through all this in depth, but I'll just note that returning production is part of it. Um, so they'll take reporting, returning production numbers uh, based on the rosters that he has updated as much as possible to account for transfers and attrition and all that. The combination of last year's SP Plus ratings, adjustments based on returning production, make up two-thirds of his projection formula. Okay, so you know that they're weighting that heavily, right? Recent recruiting. Obviously, that's going to inform what you think, the caliber of a team's potential replacements. So if you got a guy that being replaced by a guy that was a five-star as opposed to a two-star, that's going to help you out in all likelihood. Uh, past few years of recruiting rankings in diminishing order. Most recent class carries the most weight. That's the way they look at that. And then recent history. They use a sliver, as he puts it, of information from previous seasons, two to four years ago. Good measure of overall program health. If a program has been steady losing seven, eight games over the last three years, they aren't exactly upwardly mobile. You can get a So these are all kind of standard things. Um, tempo and opponent adjusted measures of college football efficiency as well. I, I like that they incorporate all that. It's um, it, it's basically a predictive measure of most sustainable and predictable aspects of football, right? So it, it's all of those kinds of things. All right. So why do I bring all that up? Well, that's a long-winded way to tell me to tell you that Florida State came in at 28, 28, um, which also tells me a couple of things. And you can get into these numbers. You can get into projected SP plus uh, offense, defense. Um, you can look at the change from last year to this year, uh, where he has, you know, Florida State last year compared to this year. Have they improved offensively, uh, defensively, uh, what they're expected to be this season, et cetera? Uh, and, you know, is it going to exactly mirror what the final polls were last year? No, but it's close. Ohio State's one, Alabama's two, Georgia's three. 
I think Ohio State is a good pick. We did it on the college sports book to uh, put a little of your pizza money down on uh, making the college football playoff. I think mean, you get plus money for that. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, but it's the same old customers, right? I mean, Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, if you want to mix that order up, that's fine. But when we get through this, you start looking at the other squads that we are more comparable to. That is to say, not Georgia, right? Are we more comparable to the likes of, say, Ole Miss or Pitt or Kentucky? Yeah, yeah, that's who we're more comparable to. Florida's 23rd, we're 28th. And what I think about with that is there's a whole lot of sort of 50-50 one-score projections, like the, the games that are going to come down to the fourth quarter, if we're just solely basing it on what these teams were the last few years, what we expect them to be, in this case, his numbers, you're just outside the top 25. Well, if you want to break into the top 25, if you want to go bowling, if you want to be a team of even marginal uh, distinction, then you're going to have to win a couple of the 50-50 games that you lost a year ago. I mean, you're going to have to win some games uh, like, a, I don't know. I mean, I think you're probably a dog uh, to, to Louisville on the road on a Friday night. Can you win that game? Yeah. You know, where, where are you at against Wake? Where are you at? That, that's, and we've known this. It's just presented in such a way that when you look at that, you realize there's a ways to go, but you can pivot to a drive here a turnover battle there, a little bit of football luck here, maybe you get to nine wins. I don't think they will. I'm not predicting that. I think eight's probably the ceiling. I don't think this is a great team. I don't think it's that talented. I think they're better. We're slowly, incrementally getting better, but we're not where we want to be. It's a little frustrating. Again, the lack of depth factors into what I project because it's football, and it's a war of attrition, as they say. and I don't know too many seasons. There have been a few, but very few, in which you get through it without an injury or two, a fairly significant injury or two. Uh, and most teams that go on to have success when that happens have a lot of depth at the position. You know, you lose your best receiver at Alabama, you're replacing him with an elite receiver who's probably going to play in the NFL. You lose your best receiver at Florida State, mm, you fall off a cliff. You got guys that you're not real sure would start for USF, not real sure would start for, you know, Troy. It's a toughie. It's the Jeff Cambridge Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. This is Kyle, service manager from Barino Heating and Air. Schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program with guaranteed same-day service, 15% off necessary repairs, and $25 berry bucks to use towards air filters and other products. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Barino Heating and Air any day, anytime, anywhere. Online at BarinoAC.com. Florida license CAC 1816-186. Congratulations to all the class of 2022 graduates. If you'd like to send a congratulations message over the air to your graduate, just call the Envision Credit Union Grad Star Line at 850-523-7890. That's 523-7890 to leave a message, and we'll play it on the radio as much as we can. No cost, no gimmicks. Just call 850-523-7890 and leave us your messages for a graduate and your family. Congratulations from Envision Credit Union. You've heard the saying before, life is short, so why not savor it? Enjoy a chic and elegant dining experience in the heart of downtown Tallahassee with a vision for seasonally inspired and regionally sourced cuisine. Rub elbows with movers and shakers and cocktail connoisseurs at the bar and browse the carefully curated wine list. The one and only savor brings more to the table for the most fastidious foodies. Relax, take it all in and savor it online at Savor Tallahassee. Com. You were always more than my mom. You were my role model, my best friend, and biggest supporter. You filled my days with unconditional love. And you also prepared for the day when you couldn't be here. Because of the woman you were back then, I'm able to be the woman I am now. Your planning made this moment possible. Set your family up for life 
Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance. Your friends for life. This is Andy Cohen. When I was a law enforcement officer, I devoted my life to a career of service and protection. Who's protecting you? Give me a call. 850-671-FARM. That's 671-FARM. Helping you is what we do best. Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, Jackson, Mississippi. Not licensed to do business in all 50 states. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. The Jeff Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. Great rates, cutting edge tech. Tampa, that was fun. That was fun. What's going on here, kids? Huh? On the verge of a sweep. We went um, on this side of the glass from Tom not expecting them to win game seven to sweeping the Florida Panthers. It's silly. Yeah, it's silly. Um, well, there's, you know, I think I think you see sometimes the value of experience and I, I'm 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 watching that Florida team that's about to get beat could very well get swept, uh, and of course they won the Presidents Cup this year, and I'm reminded of the Lightning team pre back to back Stanley Cup championships, which is that the one that got swept by Columbus, and they too won the Presidents Cup. They too destroyed hockey all season long, dominated wins points you name it, and got into the playoffs and were forced to play a different style and lost. And there's that comeuppance, that lesson that you have to learn along the way uh, about being versatile and about being tough and being able to play. Like Florida wants to get up and down the ice. They want to play a wide open style of hockey. They can score a ton of goals. They have a lot of skill. You clog the passing lanes. You rough it up a little bit. You slow things down. And next thing you know, that's a 1-1 game midway through the second. It's not being played the way you want it to be played. And you can start to see the stress, the weight of it. I talked about it at the beginning of the show. We were talking about when you're when you when there are expectations, the weight of expectations, the psychology of all this is fascinating to me. I mean, you would much rather be in a position where a lot is expected of you because you've shown something that would lead to that expectation. Whether you're an individual in an individual sport or if you're in a team sport, people don't project you to, you know, go out and win championships if you've given them no evidence that you're capable. So you want to be, you know, obviously in a position uh that People think highly. You've either shown the individual skill or the collective skill to be in a position where you're projected to succeed at an elite level. But there is no ignoring that the weight of expectations and the fear of failure, it's a very real psychological component to all this. And it doesn't take much. You just got to sprinkle in a little bit of doubt. All you got to do in both team and individual sports is sprinkle a little bit of doubt that's why you always hear it said. It's such a cliche, but it's so true. Everybody out there who's listening to this show, who played organized sports at all, if you've ever been on a good team, you know that when you play a team you're supposed to beat in anything, in anything, basketball, baseball, well, baseball's a little different because the pitcher can control so much. But in, in most of your other bigger, stronger, faster sports, right, if I'm bigger, stronger, faster, if I have a collection of people that are bigger, stronger, and faster, I'm probably going to win. Not always, probably. But what's the one way to get beat is to let the inferior team believe they can win. And how does that happen? Well, you don't put them away early. You don't collectively sow the seeds of doubt or confirm their suspicion. 
like most underdogs know they're underdogs. Now, they don't, no competitor, especially the higher up you go in team competition, no competitor is going to convince themselves they're going to lose, even if they know on the surface that the other team has had the better year, has the better players. They still think there's a chance we can win. you got to beat that out of them. You can't be sitting around in the fourth inning tied at three. You can't be in a situation where that begins to come into play. Hold those teams down. Step on the neck. Let them confirm what they already believe. We're not good enough. This team's too good. This team, you know, there's a reason they're the number two national seed. You know, there, there's a reason. They won 54 games. I mean, Mississippi State lost 25 games this year. They were barely over 500, if you will. What were they, 32 and 25? I mean, that, that's, that's not a dominating team. But you lose the first game, you get blanked, and you give those girls credit. I'm not trying to take credit from anybody. I'm just talking about how it happens. And they go out, they win that first game 5 nothing, and now – it all shifts. They've got nothing to lose. It's a minor miracle that are even in that position where it's a winner take all. In the moment, they're like, if I told you before we got sent to this regional in Tallahassee that you were going to play in a Sunday one game winner take all, you'd take it. You'd take it every day, twice on Sunday. Hell yeah, you would. Turned out to be. But that's exactly what you do. And the next thing you know, it shifts. Um, and yeah, and I agree, Ryan. Uh, truncated tournaments, that, that drives me nuts. It's it's Baseball, that's especially true. Um, you know, baseball's meant to be a series. You're mo- meant to test every element of a game in college. They can't do it because of finances. So you don't get a best four out of seven. And, you know, for years, the championship game was a singular game. Anything can happen in a single game. I used to beg for two out of three, beg for three out of five. Ideally, you want a series where my one and my two and my three get to throw. Um, but, but you know, anyhow, this baseball team's not good enough for me to complain about that. They, <laughs> they're, they're a mess. But, yeah, uh, a truncated series can hurt your feelings um, in a lot of ball sports, uh, baseball and softball. That is true. But, yeah, man, like all the, the, the idea that you let somebody hang around and believe All of that shifts to the team that is the favorite. All of that shifts to the one that is supposed to dominate. I don't know when it happens exactly, but we've all been there, right? We've all felt that. Like, we're supposed to kill this team. And now we're 10 minutes into the game. Now, it's funny. I I brought the lightning up against Florida, right? To start the third period, it was 3-1 to Tampa Bay. I was sitting with my best friend. He's a a, a Florida fan. He flew up, and we were at the game together. And he's like, well, it's going to be pretty telling here in the first five minutes of the third period. They're they're going to have to throw everything in the kitchen sink at Tampa and see if they can get a goal. Ten minutes went by, and they hadn't got a shot on goal. I was like, this this, this is about to be an ass kicking. This is over. Like, there's no belief anymore that that can come back, that 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 can happen. How quickly does that change if they score in the first five minutes of the third period and it's three to two? with 15 to play. Now all of a sudden you got guys flying around the ice, believing that not only are they going to do it, they're going to come back and win the game. And yeah, you know, I mean, that didn't happen. And they realized their ass was in the jackpot. Tough times. Hour number two, Iris Chappelle will join us in that hour. Hang in there. Jeff Cameron show 93, three real talk radio and war chant TV. Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta, Tallahassee. Breaking news this hour from townhall.com. I'm John Scott. President Biden says he doesn't believe an economic recession is inevitable in the U.S. Bernie Bennett. President Biden launched into a new trade deal with 12 Indo-Pacific nations aimed at strengthening their economies as he warned Americans worried about high inflation that it's going to be a haul before they feel relief. The president says he does not believe an economic recession is inevitable in the U.S. Our GDP is going to grow faster than China's for the first time in 40 years. 
Mr. Biden, speaking at a news conference after holding talks with Japan's prime minister, acknowledged the U.S. economy has problems, but he says they were less consequential than those the rest of the world has. Bernie Bennett reporting. A military plane carrying enough specialty infant formula for more than half a million baby bottles arrived Sunday in Indianapolis. The first of several flights expected from Europe aimed at relieving the shortage that has sent parents scrambling to find enough to feed their children. Also at townhall.com, Catherine Massey scheduled to be laid to rest as funerals continue for the victims of the racist attack at a Buffalo supermarket. The 72-year-old's funeral is today. She's been described by her friends as a civil rights and education advocate. Massey was among 10 black people killed May 14th when a white gunman in body armor targeted shoppers and workers at a tops friendly market. It's another casualty of Putin's war in Ukraine. Starbucks pulling out of Russia. In a memo to employees, a Seattle coffee giant says it's decided to close its 130 stores and will no longer have any presence in Russia. Starbucks says it will continue paying its nearly 2,000 Russian employees for six months and will help them transition to new jobs. That's correspondent Rich Thomason. Stocks higher, the Dow up 624 points in the S&P. 68 points higher or at townhall.com about to compare a pepper shaker to a cash out refinance hang with me you know when you're at a restaurant and they ask would you like some fresh ground pepper and then they crank that giant tube but almost nothing comes out for me only a certain amount of time is socially acceptable to wait i know that getting that pepper out might make my life better but it just seems too impossible and that's what we hear people say about the cash out refinance. People realize that the value of their home has gone up like hot pepper the last few years, leaving all this extra money sitting inside their home. But is it too hard to get out? It's Ryan from United Faith Mortgage. If you're interested in cashing out the extra pepper in your home, we're good at doing all the work while you just sit back and relax. And often your mortgage payment and years in the loan will stay the same. If you'd like to hear about your options, we are United, United Faith Mortgage. Mortgage. United Faith Mortgage is a DBA of United Mortgage Corp. 25 Metal Park Road, Melbourne, New York. Licensed mortgage banker. For all licensing information, go to NMLS Consumer Access. Federal corporate NMLS number 1330. Equal housing lender. I license in Alaska, Hawaii, Georgia, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Utah. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, Talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Hot! Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2... Baseball, but uh, certainly thought the softball team. I took it for granted. I did what uh, Lonnie said not to do, right? I took for granted their successes. 
a stunning turn of events uh, as they fall. And we did talk about that in the first hour. Unfortunately, a team that uh, had dominated, they'd been the story outside of Oklahoma, really of softball for some time, a, 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 a team that we thought might get back and compete for, have a chance to win maybe a national championship. Uh, it's weird when that happened, when they lost to Mississippi state, Matthew, I thought, man, can just nothing go right for Florida state right now? Doesn't it just feel like setback after setback, like the thing you want to rely upon, um, you know, that you, like that, I don't know, is it soccer or softball that I'm most comfortable with? competitively of the FSU sports. Certainly not baseball, certainly not football, it's not basketball. I don't know enough about diving. I don't know. I mean, maybe beach volleyball teams good every year. I know they came up just short and lost to Southern Cal. But like if at the start of any particular season if you say to me as a no like what's something you're pretty sure is going to happen? Like, oh well, the softball teams likely going to win the ACC championship. They've now done it 7 of the last 8 years. That includes this year. And, uh, you know, they're going to give themselves a chance. They're going to put themselves in a position to, to maybe um, win a national championship. It's going to be tough to overcome Oklahoma, I assume, as much as well about them. But they'll give maybe the soccer team, probably the soccer team. But even that, what ended up happening there is that, you know, your three-time national champion coach that you presume will be here for however long, especially when he's given an offer of uh, you know, more money than any other soccer coach in the country, you, you're like, okay, you know, so uh, they'll, they'll be good. They'll, they'll go to the college cup. The soccer team will be good. Yeah, well, they did. And then he left. Like, okay, well, I don't know. I guess I can't presume anymore about this upcoming season. I know they still got a lot of really good players. And I, I guess if you have to make a change, I like to hire the guy comes over from Tennessee, did something with nothing. All right. Well, I mean, good pedigree, but it's never going to live up to a, uh, three-time national champion, a guy that you could thought could be the national coach. Kikorian, like, that's big shoes to fill. So then the next would have been softball. You would have just, especially at home, as good as they've been, and you looked at the teams coming here, and, you, I mean, listen, again, credit to Mississippi State, but they lost 25 games. They were 32 and 25. They weren't any good. They weren't. And those teams, USF, Mississippi State, I was like, okay, sacrificial lambs rolling in here. He's going to be ass kickings. We're going to be all set. And then, boom. It's and I, devastating. And I think that sentiment was reflected in the ESPN broadcast, not even just our fans or our circle, but they were almost speechless. I, yeah, they were stunned. They were stunned. Well, that's what I mean. That's a testament all at once to how successful the program's been, how stunning that upset truly is, is that Lonnie Alameda's, Alameda's teams have been that kind of consistent to where it warrants the the the, the speechless stunning sort of uh you know you could hear uh there was a there was a there was a thickness in the air you could almost sense that they were like well this is not happening at least twice in the in the in that bottom of the seventh the broadcaster said well we expected this team to if not at least go to the world series to compete for the title yeah it's not even about getting beat it's a it's that they did get they don't get out there that 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 was a foregone conclusion Again, I, I talked about last hour, it, when you get older, you do appreciate things a little bit more because you've been on the wrong end of results enough times that when you win, when you have success, you've probably experienced enough losing to appreciate the winning. But I have to tell you that there are and, – and listen, I mean, we've made assumptions about teams before, about games before. Jacksonville State comes to mind. Uh, Florida State losing that game, I did not think it to be a possibility. And that was a travesty, embarrassing, one of the worst, if not the worst, program losses in the history of Florida State football. And there are a lot of things that had to happen for that to happen. Most of them aren't pretty, and they stain the resume. For Norvell, and it always will, unless he goes on to win a national championship or have elite success over a sustained period of time, there are a lot of people that will never forgive that. And it does stain his resume. It is a problem for him if they don't get this turned around because that is stuck in the minds of many. I'm not going to lie. Me too. That can never happen. That is embarrassing on a lot of levels. Now, 
those things are such outliers typically that you you remember where you were. You remember what you said. You remember, you know, what your thoughts were, the exact time that the moment occurs, all of it, right? That's how big an outlier it is. Like, it's fixed in your memory forevermore. Like, you'll be an old man as long as you don't go faulty. You know, telling grandkids, great grandkids about that game. Like, oh, never take it for granted. You never know. I remember one time. But that's a bad Florida State team. That's a Florida State team that went five and seven. That's a Florida State team that hasn't had a lot of success. So you're kind of like, well, if there's a team that could lose to an inferior foe to that degree, it's one that doesn't have a lot of confidence and is in transition. It's one who hasn't firmly established themselves as championship caliber, even in the conference, right? They can't even come close to winning the Atlantic. So it doesn't, like that loss is shocking and it is an outlier, but they've had some tough times around here lately. They haven't exactly been good. And we've had some near misses or dare I say some close calls with teams that had no business being in games with us late and that we found a way to pull out where you're like, oh my God, would that have been a blemish? Yeah, when Detroit's going winless in the NFL, you know who they don't, Qualify as a 50 50 game, the Patriots. Right. <laughs> right. 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 The Browns, maybe so. Maybe, maybe. Right. So you can kind of understand it. That's why it's all the more stunning that this softball team lost this weekend the way that they did against that team. That's that, that this this program has had such a run of success, has been so dominating. And again, this program's not Oklahoma, which right now is a team that you assume is going to play for and likely win a national championship. And the reason you assume that is not only the successes um, in, in, in recent years, but the recruiting rankings. And if you look at the just the player collection, what they've brought into that program, like I don't even have to follow softball recruiting, and I don't. But if, you know, you can look it up. You can see how many of the top players they're bringing in on an annual basis, and that kind of lets you know, well, let's see. In two of the last three years, they've been stockpiling the best players in the country. They ought to be pretty good. Florida State's not to that level, but they've been a superpower nationally. You know, you have the national championship run. You have teams that get out there and compete and have a chance to win national championships. So you just assume at home against this group, there was no way that this could happen, but it did happen. And I mean, credit, credit to Mississippi state, but that team, you know, all jokes aside, you, you, you say, well, they played really well and they found a way to take it and they deserve it. And they do, but let's not pretend that was a team that was, you know, 40 and 10. I mean, they, they, they were 32 and 25. So tough pill to swallow is all I'm getting at. Uh, I do I do think, again, in the midst of all of the bitterness and frustration, uh, it is a testament. The reason we're shocked is because Lonnie Alameda and this, this program have ascended to a place where that ought not happen, where a result like that is absolutely stunning. Far less stunning, for example, than to watch Florida State baseball just take an ass beating at the hands of North Carolina. And the starting pitching, which is what you have to fall back on and believe in uh, in any series, it's what's going to propel Florida State if they have any chance to achieve anything of significance because they don't do a lot else well. So you're going to look at that team and say, oh, well, you know, you're, 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 you're one and you're two, give you a chance to Oh, certainly win a game on the road, maybe even two out of three. They still can't find a third starter. All right, well, you know, that's been a bugaboo all season long, but, you you know, whatever it happens. But then when those three starters give up 10 runs in 10 innings and only 10 innings pitch from your starters over three games, well, good God, man. I guess it's um, you steal yourself for the postseason now that ACC tournament play begins, and you do so by having zero expectations of success, which means that they'll go win the ACC tournament, right? There you go. You were asked a question uh, about Coach Martin, Mike Martin Jr. 
And it was last hour. I think David asked the question, when do questions uh, surround him? Oh, I, I don't think that they, I, I think that's already started. I, I think that second he was hired, that started. Um, you know, I, I, there were, there was a handful, I, I would, I don't know what about percentage I, I would lay out there, but I don't know what that percentage would be, but I, I would say 50, 50, I, I don't know, uh, of the fan base that didn't want that hire to begin with. Um, and, and if you, if you have the kind of season that Florida state just did where you're, where you're the nine seed in the ACC tournament. And the standard is the standard. You know, Tom and I talked about this last week. The standard's the standard. He would tell you that. He would absolutely tell you that. Um, you know, he he would tell you that uh, that that's always going to be the standard is to get out to Omaha, and they may. Baseball's a weird game. They could. I don't think they will, but they could. I wouldn't be stunned by it either. But they're playing poorly. You had big RPI games in which you could have ensured an opportunity to host. And they've been so much better at home this year than on the road. So you kind of felt like, all right, well, they need to. And and I and Martin Jr. said, Meet said, you know, I, I don't think this will be the last time we see these fans. He was talking about the home fans after they took care of Miami. And the bats came alive, and they won that series two out of three against a good Miami team. And that put them in position uh, to play that Florida game and perhaps notch yet another big victory from an RPI standpoint. And then North Carolina – you could have, you don't have to win out of those four games. You don't have to win them all. You could have probably gone two and two, maybe three and one to put yourself in that position, but you lost all four. And in resounding fashion, I might add, up in Chapel Hill, resounding fashion. Those are not real good baseball games and not a real good indicator of where, you're, where your head's at right here. I mean, I, listen, again, a pitcher can control the most important aspect of the game of baseball. Uh, and you might not do anything well. Like the statistics may bear that you are average to below average at picking the baseball up. The statistics may tell you that you don't hit for power or average and that you strike out a lot. <laughs> they, those statistics can tell you a lot about the snapshot of your team. This is what they look like. This is what they are. They don't hit for a lot of power. They strike out a lot. They don't pick up the baseball with any degree of regularity. Uh, but they do this well. They pitch well. Well, when your starters get tattooed and you don't do any of those other things well, yeah, man, you're in real trouble. And that's what this weekend was. It's aggravating as all hell. They're going to have to hope that Parker Messick remembers he's Parker Messick. Hubbard remembers he's Hubbard. Uh, that was a weird outing for him. I mean, you talk just bizarre. Uh, totally lost command. And, you know, I, I mean, I, you lose the first game, and then he goes out there, and you're thinking to yourself, well, I got, I certainly got to get more than an inning out of um, my co-ace, you know, my, my 1B, if you want to say the other's 1A, whatever. I mean, that has to be it. Doesn't happen. Jeff Cameron, Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chat TV. Class has been taking care of families since 1945. Experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best, like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass, and they provide precise installation. Widden Glass, Tallahassee's first family in glass. Online at WiddenGlass.com. Call 850-222-5781. Matt, when you think of a successful Southern cookout, what do you think of first? The food, of course. The food, but you got to think about the food prep. And Hearth and Patio has thought about that with their awesome grills. What kind of grills? Fire Magic, Broil Master, Blaze Grills, Kamado Joe. Matt, they got it all. Wow. Custom outdoor kitchens create an outdoor cooking space. You'll be the envy of your neighborhood. You will be the envy of your neighborhood, and you'll make a lot of people jealous. That's because you called Hearth and Patio at 850 850- 727-4282 that's 850-727-4282 or you can visit hearth and patio online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com <laughs> it's a backyard barbecue party <laughs> Wesley Holcomb's the number one more time 850-727-4282 
That's 850-727-4282. The Hearth and Patio, they not only keep the home fires burning, Hearth and Patio will elevate your grilling game. Nice. Nice indeed. When you need a plumber quick, how long is an acceptable time to have to wait? Uh, yeah, hey, it's the Millers again. I'm uh, just calling you about our little plumbing problem. Two hours? Hey, uh, we were hoping you can get here soon because the water is getting really bad. I mean, it's... Please uh, hurry. Four hours? Yeah, I know you said you were on your way, but, uh, honey, tell the kids to drink water. Eight hours? Don't worry about us. We're all right. At MNL Plumbing, you'll never have to wait long for quality, dependable service right when you need it. At MNL Plumbing, we listen to our customers and our qualified technicians aim to achieve 100% customer satisfaction. So the next time you need plumbing work or repairs, think of the name MNL Plumbing, your local plumbing experts, commercial or residential. Give us a call, 850 575 9393, or visit us online at mnlplumbing.com. MNL Plumbing, for all of your plumbing needs. Dirty exterior? Don't scrub it. Wet it and forget it. Wet and forget the easy outdoor cleaner. Wet and forget works over time with Mother Nature to eliminate unsightly black and green stains on the exterior of your home with no scrubbing, power washing, or bleach. Use wet and forget on all your outdoor surfaces, including decks, siding, roofs, and patios. Wet and forget's available in a concentrate or extreme reach hose in. Purchase wet and forget in store or online at Lowe's, Menards, Ace, or Walmart. Angie's List is now Angie, your home for everything home. With Angie, you could cross your next project off your to-do list before this ad is over. Just tell us what you need and we'll handle the rest. Sending a top pro to get it done. Or browse reviews, compare quotes from pros, and connect instantly. All for free. For everything from routine maintenance to a dream remodel. Because however you want your project done, we'll get it done. Download the app or go to Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com to get started. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today. Uh, to go see my friends at Hamilton Home Loans, Chad and Shannon, legendary team that they are. Give a call today, 844 FSU Loan. Again, you, you want uh, you want this to be speedy, you want it to be simplistic, and you want the uh, service to be uh, transparent. Cutting edge technology and transparent communication. That is a five star mortgage experience. You're going to get uh, a different kind of mortgage experience with my friends, Chad and Shannon at the legendary team of Home, Hamilton Home Loans. Give them a call today, F, uh, 844-FSU-LOAN or fsuhomeloans.com if you want to look them up, fsuhomeloans.com. Short segment here. You and I are both huge Tiger fans. Man, that was tough. I don't know if I need to see that again. It's strange, too, because he had well, the same limp coming up 18 at Augusta. But this was so much more pronounced, so much, I mean, obviously so much more that he had to withdraw, but it was almost sad watching him out there. Um, I think it was very sad to watch him out there. I, I think for him to withdraw is the scariest part because he didn't play well at Augusta. He made the cut and we were pretty happy about that. But by the time he walked up 18 at Augusta National, it was more about, tipping the cap for the intestinal fortitude, the toughness, the willingness to go out there without your best stuff, to give it a go. 
Uh, you know, most fans would tell you that let's just say at the end of Jack's career, when he wasn't going to win, they were still thankful to see him out there. They still enjoyed watching him play and he could throw up a 77 and a 74, not be around for the weekend. You know, I could at least I got to see Jack. I mean, he's a living legend. It's amazing. You know, and he was always, I, I think, you know, affable and gave back to the sport and gave back to the fans. And so with Tiger, when, when that happened at Augusta to where he just wanted to see if he could compete, made the cut, which is really admirable when you consider the amount of people that didn't make the cut. That's true of this tournament too, by the way. If you rattle off the names of the superstars that did not make the cut this weekend, it is a bit of a minor miracle that a guy in that much pain with the inability to push off his back leg could still make the cut. That's a, a testament to the savvy, to the toughness, to the mental and to the skill, it's all there, right? But but to see it on Saturday play out the way that it did, and I think a lot of that might have had to do with the fact that it got cold. I don't know. But he was, for him, one, okay, so no matter if you are somebody who, who who is a detractor of Tiger or somebody that is a fan or somewhere in between, one thing that you cannot deny is that that guy is, uh, I mean, competitive in an unhealthy way, and he's certainly – Always done the interview. Always done the interview, right? Wouldn't do the interview. That's never, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time he's doing the interview, good, bad, or otherwise. He'll be a pro. And I'm not saying he was unprofessional. I think he was in that much pain. I think he needed to go get treatment immediately. And he even said, please, sorry, I got, you know. Well, what are we doing? Because at the start of the week, the whole thought was that he was healthier, that he had gotten stronger since Augusta. He said it, you know, hinted at it. The, the When you watch his practice rounds or even his Thursday round, you got a sense of, okay, well, he's not playing great, but he doesn't look to be in as much agony. Man, that is, I don't know, that does not bode well. It makes a little more sense, too. The other didn't. When he was when he was decent at, a, you know, at the Masters, you're like, well, that is inexplicable. They almost had to amputate the leg. This makes more sense. This seems more commiserate with the extent of the injury that we've read about. But it's also uh, unsettling in that, you know, golf is at a point now where it's going to have to reckon with the fact that Tiger Woods is maybe no more. And, you know, I mean, we kind of view him as a Superman and we keep saying, well, he'll come back, he'll come back. And, and there's part of me that thinks he still will. In certain courses, he will come back. But I don't know anymore that, I, that this isn't like 2019. This, this, is, this is different. I'm not sure he comes back from this uh, in, in a way that is recognizable to where he's in contention on a Sunday or you have a belief that he could somehow surprise us with one more magic moment, you know, the way that Jack did in 86 in his 40s. You know, Jack wasn't dealing with injuries, uh, not, not, not to the extent that we're talking about here. I don't know that that's in there. And I kind of was of the mindset and of the ilk of, like, he'll come back. He'll, it'll happen. I'm not so sure, man. That, that was tough to watch. Irash Fell, Warchant.com, going to join us next. Stay tuned. Your local news now. The Tallahassee Fire Department responded to a residential structure fire that occurred Saturday morning. TFD received a call around 1020 a.m. and they were able to arrive on the scene just three minutes after the call in the 2000 block of Brighton Road. Upon arrival, crews found the residential structure with heavy smoke and fire billowing from the front door and window. No injuries were reported and the American Red Cross was called to help the resident. This remains an active investigation. Florida Highway Patrol responded to Anon Church Road Friday night to assist with locating a stolen vehicle. Upon their arrival, a trooper found the vehicle. When trying to overtake it, the vehicle crashed and the suspect fled scene on foot into a wooded area. With the help of the Leon County Sheriff's Office, the 27-year-old suspect was found and taken into custody. The suspect had minor injuries from the crash when trying to flee. This is Rachel Anae with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update. Brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. <laughs> This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Scattered thunderstorms likely this afternoon, otherwise a mix of clouds and sun. High of 85, winds out of the southwest, 8 to 15 miles per hour. Chance for scattered thunderstorms tonight, lows dip down to about 70, mainly cloudy skies. Chance for scattered thunderstorms again tomorrow. Daytime highs approaching 90, mainly cloudy skies expected. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 90.
The weather is unpredictable and can cause issues around your home. Weston Traywick provides commercial, residential, and industrial electrical wiring services, yearly inspections on fire alarms, portable generator sales, and so much more. With 24-7 emergency service and repair, Weston Traywick will be your calm in the storm. Give them a call at 514-0003. Weston Traywick, professional electrical services day or night. Visit online at westontraywick.com. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. We need to have history. We need to have literature. It deserves an explanation. We don't need to be promoting lifestyles that come into play for your average elementary school. Well, I had an experience with this. When my daughter was in school, her teacher gave her a book to read, but then she asked me what the C word is. That was in the book. That was in the book. Okay, so talking about the C word. So you're talking about conservatives, right? <laughs> The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Chant.com, the website. He joins us most every Monday, this one included. That's always a good thing. Hello, Ira. How are you, brother? I'm great, Jeff. How you doing, man? I'm good, buddy. I'm curious. You want to start with the stunning turn of events with softball and the exit there or the uh, asinine way in which the baseball team concluded the season with four straight losses, three of which were uh, beatdowns at the hands of UNC. Where do you want to begin? Which positive note do you want to go with there, huh? Lots of good options, buddy. Lots of good <laughs> options. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start with softball if that works. All right. Well, I, I've tried to put this in proper context. I mean, I think it's pretty easy. You can read Corey's piece on Warchant.com. Of course, everybody knows how successful this program has been, how great they were uh, this season. Um, you, you never in a million years uh, thought this team would lose at home uh, to this collection. Uh, you didn't think that, um, you know, you have, you, you finished the season with uh, what, 54 wins. Uh, you, you were 49 and five in the regular season, uh, highest winning percentage in a regular season in school history. You have all that experience, all that talent. And then that happens. And it's a reminder not to take things for granted. That is a brutal kick to the stomach for a program that I think we all just assumed would at least make a run at a national championship uh, or, or at least get there to compete with Oklahoma. Yeah. It just, you know, obviously it just thinks for, especially for the team, but you know, you think about, you know, when you look at it from the big picture and I think Corey touched on it some, you know, this, this wasn't a team that was just blowing people out for 54 wins. I mean, right. a lot of those games were, you know, last at bats, comebacks, dramatic wins, um, you know, just some improbable things happen. Uh, during the course of some of those wins, and so, so from a from a standpoint of a somebody who's watched a lot of sports, like you or me or most of the people listening to this, you kind of know sometimes that you know the, the game just does it to you, where things either level out or if you've been benefiting from something for a long time, maybe something comes back against you. And I really felt like watching those two games yesterday, it just felt like all of that was coming back in one day because I mean they could not get a break. I mean they get a yeah. runner on. They get a runner on. Somebody would crush a home run foul. Uh, they, you know, there was a late. In the, you know, is one of the last innings um, in the second game. You know, it's I think when they're down one, the leadoff batter, you know, is ahead three and zero in the count. The next pitch is way outside of the zone. It should be a walk, but the umpire calls it a strike because sometimes they just get. I don't know why they just think they're going to call anything a strike on a three and zero pitch. Sometimes. Well, then now she fouls off the next one, and then she ends up you know, getting out. So it just, mm -hmm. it just seemed like it was one of those things every inning. And, and meanwhile, Mississippi State, when they got opportunities, they cashed in on them. And, and it, just, it was just one of those days. But it's, it's, um, it's frustrating. 
um, obviously, because you do think in the in the you know the grand picture, Florida State is one of the best teams in the country. They should be a team that was playing next week in the Super Regionals and moving on. But uh, you know, as Corey also mentioned in his column, you know, it, the, it, it goes both ways. Florida State in 2019 baseball should not have made it to as far as they made it to Omaha, but they did. They upset Georgia. They upset LSU. This FSU team last year made it to the championship round. Nobody thought that was a team that was going to go to the championship round. It's just, it's kind of the nature of sports. It just really stinks what happens to a team that you follow and you, and you, and you know how hard and how well those kids have played all year. Yeah. And, and here's the thing I agree. This was not like vintage Florida State softball in the sense that there have been better teams along the way that have gone on to have great success, including the national championship. But, but this wasn't that team. But that said, we certainly didn't expect them to lose in this round to this group. You know, that's a 25 loss Mississippi state team. That's, that is hard to wrap your mind around. And it's not to me, I'm not trying to pile on. It just makes it tough to stomach. I feel so bad for those girls. Cause they're better than that. That's just a bad day at the office and it's the wrong time to have it. Yeah. And in the, in the first game to me was probably more frustrating because I just felt like that, you know, the, the pitcher from Mississippi state was throwing a lot of junk and the FSU kids were just so far out in front of everything. I mean, they must have hit, I don't know, of the of the 21 outs, I have to think 15 of them were weak pop-ups mm-hmm. uh, where they just could not, um, you know, just could not stay disciplined. They had a hard time picking it up off that pitcher. And it's like, okay, maybe game two is going to be different. And they jump out, they get the two-run lead, and then they push the 3-1. And yeah. it's like, okay, they're going to they're gonna push this through. And then, you know, just one really tough inning where you get a couple of runners on base, bring back in Sandercock. And, I mean, it's just that, you know, I don't know. I don't know who you feel worse for. Sidney Sherrill, do you feel worse for, you know, San- Captain Sandercock who had one loss all season? And loses one, twice in one day? And then gets two losses <laughs> on one day? Yeah, brutal. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's just, that's that, that, and then seeing the reaction on the field and then obviously in the press conference, I mean, you just really hurt, hurt for them for sure. That's a tough press conference to watch. Um, Lonnie is all class as always and gave credit where credit's due and refused to make the umpires the story and all of those things. But man, that's tough they, to watch. They were ter- those umpires were terrible though. I thought, I thought it, yeah. it, it was a rough, both games. I thought the strike zone was not in Florida state's favor. I didn't, you know, again, I mean, she's not going to cite the umpires, you know, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm never afraid to hide from, but you know, to, to get involved there, the overturn <laughs> that call in the seventh inning was crazy. Crazy. Um, I mean, you know, again, if you would have called it, they would have called, the other way on the field, they would call her out on the field and said, "Hey, we don't have enough to reverse it." That would have been one thing, but to overturn it based on those replays, and it just, but it just seemed like par for the course where everything kind of went against them. Yeah, they have not figured out both in college baseball and in softball the uh, review system. They have not figured out how to properly utilize uh, replay. Uh, I wa- it happens all year long in baseball when you watch college baseball. You're like, well, I don't even know why they bother to review anything. Uh, and it was kind of you know fitting to some degree, or I guess just kind of, you know, last year when they started talking about bringing replay into the game and a lot of media assumed like all the coaches would be for it. And that, from what I remember, Alani Alameda was not a big fan of it. She thinks the, the game is great the way it is. She wasn't in favor of maybe necessarily jumping into it. And then, you know, it ended up kind of costing her in the big moment. I've grown over the years to agree with her and others, man. Uh, the more I see it and the inability to execute what I think should be straightforward and simple, but isn't. I I'm more and more I'm in favor because of the incompetence of saying, no, we don't need it because if we're going to have it and you can't get it right, uh, then why have it? What's the point? You're just delaying games and it's annoying. It's actually in a weird way, more frustrating because I think for those of us who grew up where human error, uh, was an element of the game and you understood that it could happen while that made you mad. Sometimes you kind of understood it. You you know, they're human beings and the game's played fast, whatever you kind of understood it. This, this makes me angrier. When I watch people look at something 15 times over, delay a game, and then screw it up, still I can't. I no, I can't do that. Let's go to baseball. I have no earthly idea how they'll play in the ACC tournament this week. I just know that that is a colossal, colossal face plant over these last four games. And what's frustrating to me is at the end of the year here, when you really kind of assess this baseball team, now they're not even getting really good starting pitching here late, which is really troubling because that was the one thing you could rely on. I just don't understand. I'll have to go back and pinpoint the number, and I will because it's it's bothering me. When did this program stop picking up the baseball and doing anything right in the field? I mean, it's been a number of years now, right? They they suck defensively. They suck. 
Yeah, no, it, it's, it has been a number of years. Um, and it's unfortunate because again, that was, that was one of the hallmarks of, uh, you know, FSU's teams, you know, during the, the great years. Uh, they were always, you know, especially in the infield, they would be great. Mike Martin, Mike Martin senior would coach the infield. Yes. And, uh, they were, they were very good. Um, but no, it has been several years. And, uh, you know, that week was really disappointing. On the other side of it, you know, what happened to the softball team is what you got to point to if you're Mike Martin Jr. and that staff and say, look, man, Mississippi State, nobody would have thought they could do what they did. And, you know, they went into, a, a, you know, a Tallahassee where Florida State hadn't lost in nine years uh, in a regional game. Hadn't lost one regional game in nine years and then swept them uh, two games on elimination su- uh, Sunday. So, you know, that's for your, if you're Mike Martin Jr. say, look, man, there's still a lot for us to play for. And if we win a couple of these games, at least put ourselves in, a, in as good a position possible in a regional to maybe have a chance to sneak through and, and, and get, to the next, get to the next game. As bad as we played last week, it can turn around this week. So, um, you know, it wouldn't shock me if they won a couple of these games in the AC tournament. I agree. Uh, but, but, man, it, that, but that week, to, as, to your point, they had a chance to really solidify themselves as a regional host, and they just, which would have been huge for a team that's pretty good on the road or pretty good at home and terrible on the road. Instead, they went and just completely collapsed, and now they'll likely be on the road the rest of the way. Yeah, you wrote about it, Ira. You, you talked about how good they've been at home and how bad they've been on the road, but they're starting to hit some markers here that, that are disconcerting. I mean, ninth in the ACC is garbage. Uh, the, the amount of losses uh, on the year, it's it's just it seems foreign here. That's hard to look at. People are edgy and uh, and not feeling really good about where FSU baseball is at right now. One final thing before I let you go. Uh, obviously, we know that uh, Dimitri Emanuel was uh, on campus and uh, or is, is certainly rumored to be on campus. I, I don't know if that was confirmed at the start of the show or not. I, I'd seen a couple of places. Um, yeah. And I know I know Michael Langston was talking about it. So he, he's here. He's the offensive lineman from Charlotte is the point. Uh, do we feel good about this? Do you know? I think they do. Yeah, from what I understand, I think they feel really good about it. Um, you know, and I, I I wouldn't be shocked if if he doesn't take another visit. We'll see. Um, and you know, I you know the nice thing about him is he, he has started a lot of college football games over the last three years. Uh, whether or not he wins a starting job is debatable, but it would be a great to have another depth piece. Yeah, a guy that's played a lot of college football, so uh, he would be a huge addition. And and it sounds like from what Michael's reported, they've got a junior college offensive lineman who might be visiting as well. So, uh, you know, there might be more help on the way uh, for that offensive line. Yeah, you would think with the Atkins relationship there at Charlotte, you'd like to believe that that they have the edge. We don't know. We'll find out. But uh, looking for depth pieces there, we all know that the offensive line gets banged up. And Dimitri Emanuel seems like a kid that could provide that depth because, as you noted correctly, Ira, he's played a ton, and he's also played a bunch of different positions on the offensive line. So that's important, too. Always good, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jeff. See you, man. All right, be good. That's uh, Irashfell, warchant.com. Yeah, again, this is a kid that in Dimitri Emanuel uh, that has played um, guard and tackle. Uh, I think he's even had a start or two at center. So he's a guy that uh, can come in and, and provide experience, provide backup. If you look at his, listen, the, the whatever evaluation you want to make of him, it's, it's, it's difficult when a guy's at Charlotte. Uh, to necessarily see how a player translates to the Power Five level uh, and how well he'll do. Uh, but I, I do think that from what I can see and from what he's done in his career up to this point, he does serve as a decent uh, backup option. Um, probably not a guy you necessarily want to start. Who knows? Again, though, I've said this before. It happened with Bless Harris. I thought they were bringing him in primarily to be a backup. And then what he showed in spring – I thought he looked like one of the five that should be starting, and it feels like he's probably going to. So, I mean, I don't know if that's true, but it feels like it. And if that's the case, then I guess, you know, again, it makes me sad on the one hand. On the other hand, it would be that he's completely necessary. Uh, maybe Dimitri Emanuel comes, Emmanuel comes in here and, and is one of the better guys and, and does get a start. And then, uh, you, you, you know, then you would have found two transfer portal starters in the span of a year. Jeff Cameron, Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV. Physical stress on our bodies can take its toll as the years go by. Whether you're looking to get back into an old sport or just want to spend more time outdoors to explore all life has to offer in our beautiful city, the dedicated team at TOC is here for you every step of the way. You can trust TOC for all your orthopedic needs. And now, scheduling an appointment has never been easier. Just visit TeamTOC.com and click Schedule Online. That's TeamTOC.com. Hey, no 
Hail fans, our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Hey, this is Dustin Rivest. During the pandemic, I noticed restaurants struggling with online ordering and watched as all the major third parties took advantage of our local restaurants and thought there must be a better way, which is why I created foodiestakeout.com. The unique thing about Foodies Takeout is that restaurants keep 100% of their order revenue versus splitting upwards of 30% with the third parties like Uber Eats and Bite Squad. At Foodies Takeout, you can find some of your favorite restaurants, such as Jerry's Midtown Cafe, Misty's Kitchen in Frenchtown, Casa Grande, and even El Jalisco. Or if you're on the north side of town, check out Horizons Bar and Grill. Why not give us a try? Head to foodiestakeout.com or text foodies to 230-9456, and I'll even give you 10% off your first meal. Supporting local restaurants has never been easier. Visit foodiestakeout.com. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Hi, this is the legendary Mary Bush Smith inviting you to tune in every Sunday morning from 8 to 9 o'clock a.m. for Sunday Morning Gospel. We will feature our sponsor, TLC Chiropractic, Dr. Gregory Iceman, 850-222-5700. Let me tell you what T-Spark stands for. It stands for strength, commitment, teamwork, and heart. We don't ever quit until we've got nothing left to give. Our team is unstoppable. Want a guaranteed win? Call T-Spark Enterprises for your next roofing or construction project. We conquer all peaks. T-SparkConstruction.com. License number CCC 133-1204. The Jeff Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loan. I mean, it's crazy, right? I mean, it all in a weird way. Play the results game. It can get undone if they get out to Omaha. If you if you get out to Omaha, and all of a sudden, you know, NC State brought up in the chat. I think it was Live Spectator pointed out that they were terrible last year and they made it out to Omaha. It does happen. I mean, that Florida State team that won in Baton Rouge was not a great team and and took it out to Omaha. And I watched that happen in person. Couldn't believe it. So, stranger things have happened. They could do it. The, the problem is, and I know they're, they're having to retool this roster. It, I think it's a deadly combination when you don't have offensively a lot of talent, and they don't. They're not a very talented team. There's a couple kids here that I really like, but only a couple. And they don't do the other things right. So it's a pretty deadly combination when you don't have a depth of talent you don't you don't play well defensively they don't run the base as well um you know you're solely reliant basically on your your two aces at the top if they don't pitch well it's you know i know that's true of a lot of teams you can say like like, like you don't get good starting pitching but it's not like Florida state offensively is you know a, a team that's going to light it up where you can overcome an off day you know, this isn't a team that provides the fireworks. They don't hit for power at all. So, you know, if you strike out a ton and you don't hit for a lot of power, that's an ugly look. I mean, I'll live with some of the strikeouts if you're gonna if you're gonna be amongst the the, the league's leaders in home runs, if you're gonna be one of the best in the league and hitting hitting the ball out of the ballpark. It's not my favorite style of play, 
but you can live with it. You sit around and wait for the three-run homer, the old Earl Weaver style of baseball. You're kind of like, all right, well, they're going to feast and famine with the long ball. It's not ideal, but at least we know why they're striking out. And they strike out a lot and they don't hit for power. So that ain't good. In the pros, you can be John Carlos Stanton and make $300 million for what you do. But if you don't hit all those home runs, <laughs> yeah. you're out of the league. <laughs> yeah. 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 You got to be able to do so. It's, it's, and I think the other hard part for people, uh, there's some guys that have gone backwards this season. I think that's true. They have. Um, guys that I think we thought would be better this year that aren't. And that adds to it because when that happens, you know, at some point, I understand where people will point to coaching and say, why is that happening? You know, now baseball lends itself to that more than almost any other sport. You, you don't see too many top flight quarterbacks play at a really high level and then turn around and suck the next year. It's pretty rare. But you do occasionally see in baseball kids trending or guys trending in a direction and then have get off to, like, say, a bad start and fall to pieces. It, it, it's a sport of failure, immense failure. So I, I sometimes you see that. But, well, I'll tell you what, it's uh, awfully frustrating. Let's uh, do some probable, shall we? Fire it up. It's time for how you say with the pitching uh, probables. Brought to you by North Florida Payroll Services, locally owned for nearly 15 years, offering payroll and HR services, including full online applicant onboarding and integration into payroll. Save your company money and headaches today. Head to NorthFordaPayroll.com. Yeah, let's see if the Pirates can try to keep it within 14 tonight. Yeah, you know, it's one thing you're down 13 to nothing at the top of the ninth, and then you got to give up a five spot. Come on, guys. 13 to nothing, really. We were down 13 to nothing the other day against the Cardinals and uh, gave up five in the ninth. We did answer back with a big four spot of our own in the bottom of the ninth. You know, that just seems unnecessary, and I think I would throw at a Cardinal. <laughs> I mean, they weren't stealing bases, man. <laughs> I don't care. We can't get anybody out. <laughs> Take that pitch down the heart. Uh, it's 13 nothing. We don't need a grand slam. <laughs> Rockies Pirates, Chad Cool, former Bucko, performed admirably for Colorado. Of course he has. JT Brubaker, who's not any good. Cubs, Reds, Drew Smiley, Vladimir Gutierrez. Dodgers, Nats, Tyler Anderson, John Adam. Orioles, Yankees, Jordan Lyles, former Pirate, Garrett Cole, former Pirate. They're everywhere. One of those guys is really good. The other one is not. <laughs> Phillies, Braves, Zach Wheeler, Tucker Davidson, Tigers, Twins, Bo Brisky, and Chris Archer, who's somehow still in the league. Blue Jays, Cardinals, Jose Barrios, Miles Mikulis. Yes. Hey, Nailed it. Yeah, well done. Guardians TBD, Luis Garcia goes for the Strohs. Royals, D-backs, Zach Grinke versus Zach Davies. I think this is the second time we've had the Zachs this year. A's, Mariners, Zach. What, what the hell is going on here? Zach, love you. Marco Gonzalez. Brewers, Padres, Adrian Hauser, Nick Martinez, Mets, Giants, David Peterson. Alex Cobb. And that is a look at those that shall reside on the bump. By the way, really quick, noted, uh, who's my favorite Expo player, Eric? Ooh, from back in the day. Uh, well, Pedro Martinez, but I would also argue that team had a lot of people that I liked. Tim Raines, high on my list of players. Uh, Rock Raines, I loved. Uh, Larry Walker was on that 94 team. Good player. That team was loaded. That was, fun. that was a fun team. Probably would have won the whole thing if the strike hadn't happened. I didn't see a lot of his Expos career, but he was playing with the Braves at the time I was really getting into baseball. But I loved Andres Galarraga for some reason. Yeah, he was a good player. Gary Carter was on that team. I mean, it goes back a long ways. Uh, it was a Expos. Uh, by the way, so a bunch of people ask where I got this hat. I've had this hat for like two years now, and I had lost it. Sometimes it's the little things in your day, Matthew. I got home from Tampa last night and uh, was putting my bag away. 
taking the dirty clothes out, throwing them in the dirty laundry, getting things organized before I went to bed. And I moved some stuff around and I looked over and I went, oh, there's my Expos cap. Damn it, man. How did you fall back here behind the suitcase? But he had. He had fallen back there behind the suitcase, and I snatched him up. And I was like, get your wrinkly ass over here, going on the counter. So uh, yeah, no, I, I I like that. I always liked the uh, the logo, and I always uh, appreciated that team. Uh, so you know, do you have or have you ever had like a favorite hat? My pirates hat that I wear a lot. You see me wear a lot. It's very comfortable. I love that hat. I've got the black lightning hat that I wear in excess uh, that I think is very comfortable. Uh, I had a favorite hat that I had to retire this year. It broke my heart. I don't know how it got stretched out by my fat head, but it did. I, it got a little loosey around the sides. I can't stand that. You can't have all that looseness. And it was a fitted cap. So once it goes, the elasticity goes, there's nothing you can do. I mean, it, it, what am I going to do? I tried to wash it even. It didn't work. I was like, man. So that. I had a favorite hat, but it, it was uh, the black clover one that I wore for a while there, and it's gone. It's just gone. That hat was awesome. I'm going to get another one, but I don't trust them. You know, the Live Lucky, I don't, I don't trust them anymore. I'm like, man, this is – I tried. I, I spent good money on this hat. So, no, Pirate's cap, my, uh, my, my lightning cap, and then I've got an FSU cap that's a golf – a Titleist Garnet and Gold with FS, FS on the side that's very comfortable that I wear to play golf sometimes. That's a, that's a comfortable one. Speaking of which, that was one success. We should note that the, the men and women did very, very well uh, on the links, and that's uh, that, you know that I'm happy about because uh, now that's a chance for us to possibly watch them at the end of the year. You know, Golf Channel has done a really good job with coverage um, of college golf, and I know it's very niche, and a lot of you guys are like, dude, I am not going to watch you talk about college golf. Got it. But I like it, and I'm friends with the coach, so I'm going to pay attention to it. Uh, and that's the way that works. And they played well. And maybe they'll both men and women will continue to play well. And the next thing you know, there we go. All right, great job out of you, Director Matthew. I know you had to do both duties today in producing and, uh, and directing. Appreciate your hard work. Appreciate all of you guys. And uh, hopefully it's less depressing tomorrow. We won't be talking about losses in excess. Nothing to lose tonight, man. Nothing, nothing for FSU to lose tonight, right? It'll be good. Good work out of you. Be well, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.